I'm going to show you how to sharpen a chisel. There are lots of ways to do this. Uh, you can look on YouTube and I'm sure find hundreds of different uh, methods or opinions or whatever. And I'm sure they all work fine for whoever's showing those particular procedures. So I'm going to show you the way I do it. Uh, this method is fairly common, I think. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary about it. So what I have here is a, this is an old chisel, but it does not appear that it's ever been sharpened. We're going to sharpen it up and I'll show you the steps along the way. Before we start, uh, I always want to examine the chisel and see what we can expect in the sharpening process. This chisel has been buffed and that can be a problem just because these edges are, are rounded a little bit. We'll have to see how that uh, how that goes. It has a little bit of rust on the bevel, which won't be a problem uh, because we'll, we'll grind that. I, I, I am a little concerned about there's some surface rust on the face. But other than that, it looks fine. It's an, like I said, it's an older chisel. I have no idea how old, but um, that would account for the rust and apparently wasn't stored very well. Uh, I'm going to measure the bevel. It is just over 25, just less than 27 and a half. So that's, that's fine. If anything, I might steepen up the bevel a little bit when we uh, grind it. Looks like a decent chisel. Might also want to look, see how flat the face is. Looks very flat, so that's a good sign. What I what I definitely don't want is is a belly, a little bit of a hollow I can live with. This is my sharpening station in my shop. It's the uh, Ian Kirby. A sharpening bench that he describes in his book uh, Sharpening with Water Stones. I've got a place on either side for stones. I've got a tabletop here to store the stones. I've got a, a bucket of water here that easily accessible and uh, that's about it. So these are Shapton uh, glass stones. They're fairly thin. Because they don't need to be in water all the time, I store them like this. They're vertical so they can drain well, drain easily, and, and they're slightly at an angle so any dust in the shop doesn't tend to uh, settle on them. I've got a flattening stone here. If I did not have the flattening stone, I would use a granite block with some sandpaper to uh, flatten my stones. I'm going to start with my thousand grit stone and I for for these particular stones I have a stone holder if I was using a, a typical water stone I would just set the stone uh, right here so I've made sure this is flat I always flatten my stones before I put them away I'll get it wet now if I was using a regular water stone I would soak it first for a bit and uh, make sure that it's fully uh, fully wet I've got a, a spray bottle handy here where I can spray spray the stone to keep it wet. So I'm going to start by moving the chisel back and forth like this. Now the first thing I notice is it's hitting here and it's hitting over here. So that tells me it does have a slight uh, hollow to it, which is okay. So with this motion, I need to make sure I'm holding the chisel correctly. What I like to do is, is keep my fingers on the bevel, my thumb on the back side of the bevel here, so I'm only pushing down on the chisel. Uh, and I say that because I don't want to grab it like this. If you grab the chisel like this, you're, you're just unconsciously, you're going to be putting a little bit of, of upward force on it. And you're going to create a, a little bit of a, a back bevel or a, 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 almost a belly here. It's really important that you do not lift over here. So I'm only going to be pushing down. I may put my little finger over here just to keep the chisel from, from swinging around. But in general, I want all my force down on this chisel. I'm going to be going back and forth here. Depending on the size of the chisel and if, if it has much of a, a belly or whatever on it or a, a hollow, I'm going to come perhaps off of the stone on this left side a little bit, not too far, 
and I'm going to be working off the stone this way too. But no more than, you know, leaving that at about an inch. So I'll come back on the stone. And then off. Now if I continue to do these full strokes, I'm going to wear the stone most in the middle and I'll create a hollow like that. So one thing I like to do, keep, keep it wet, is I'll work the stone in thirds so that if anything I you know, create three small hollows which tends to keep the stone a little, little flatter. Okay, whenever you pick the stone or pick the chisel up off the stone, you always want to pull it straight up. Don't don't ever slide it off. If you slide it off, the last thing to hit is going to be a corner and you're going to have uh, problems. We're going to take a look here and at the moment, I can see the chisel's hitting at the tip. And then it's hitting from about here back. So there's actually a little bit of a hollow right there. So we'll work this a little more, see how that, uh, how that progresses. Now, it's very important that you keep the stone flat. So I'm going to rinse it off. And I'm going to flatten it. Now, I would say every... Every few minutes, you need to flatten the, your stone. Okay, I know that sounds like a lot, but if you don't, you're going to have problems. I'm going to continue the same process. Occasionally, I'll turn the stone around. Okay, I've worked the chisel a few more minutes and I can still see there's a hollow there. It's hitting at the tip. I'm going to uh, switch to a diamond stone. I think that's going to go a little more quickly. This is a DMT coarse diamond stone. I'm going to start here and see how this looks. I do have an extra coarse uh, face on the other side. But I don't want to go any more coarse than I have to. Still want to use water on this. Now I could have st stuck with the thousand grit stone, but it's going to take me a lot longer. So the diamond stone will speed this process up. It cuts a little more quickly, it's coarser, and I don't have to flatten it. Hopefully, your chisel won't be. Uh, hollow like this one is and you won't need to do that. Once again I want to make sure I pick this up. Okay so that's that's looking pretty good. I'm not sure that shows very well. The problem with starting with a coarse diamond stone is it can put really deep scratches in your chisel and sometimes those are harder to get out than what you're trying to fix. So I always start with a, a little finer stone than I might think I need. Okay, just a little spot there. Since it's so close, I'm going to continue on. Normally I wouldn't worry about that, but this is going pretty quickly. Same grip as before, fingers on top. Got my little finger off to the side here. Okay, as I finish up, I want to take some lighter pressure strokes. I'm not pushing quite as hard. Okay, so that, that looks good. It's very flat from here all the way back to here. The rest of this I'm not, not concerned about. One thing I, I 
should mention, as I'm doing this, I always want to make sure, and this is dependent on the chisel, but, but typically you don't want to come onto the stone past where these uh, corners are, where the shoulder of the chisel ends. Almost always this part of the chisel really kind of rounds back, and if, if you were to come too far forward here, it would lift up the chisel and once again be hitting the tip too much. It's going to work that just a little bit more there. Just like I said, back to that shoulder. See how that looks. Yes, yeah, so I'm getting a little different scratch pattern when I'm working there. So there might be a little bit of a high spot. Okay, so let me rinse this. And then we'll hit it one more time. Okay, so that that looks good. I've got a consistent scratch pattern. We'll go back to the 1,000 grit stone now. Okay, I can see now I'm getting a much better pattern. Before it was just hitting here and here. So that's a good, good sign. Ideally, if you get a decent set of chisels, you'd, you'd start out with something similar to that when you first start flattening the face of your chisel. Okay, it's starting to get a little sticky. I'm going to pull that off. Okay, so that looks good. I've got a very consistent scratch pattern from basically from there forward. So, flatten, flatten that and uh, move on to the next grit. So this is uh, 1000 grit. I'm sorry, this is a 4,000 grit stone. Should see a similar scratch pattern. So every, every stone has its own personality or every type of stone. So you, you kind of have to figure out what your stone likes and doesn't like and how it likes to be treated and what kind of pressure you can put and how long you can go till you have to get it wet again. So these, these particular stones, these Shaptons, if you let them dry out too much, the, the tool really sticks. So you notice I'm, as it starts to dry, I, I move the chisel around and move the water around. So same pattern, so to speak, as before. I'm kind of working across the stone on and off with the with the chisel. Every time I pick it up I want to roll it off and what I'm looking for is a, a very consistent pattern. So that's that's looking nice. We'll look at that. Okay so here it is up uh, up close and you can see we're starting to get a little bit of reflection there. We typically would get that at 4,000 and the scratch pattern looks very consistent. You know, once I get back to here, it looks a little different, but that's, I'm not worried about that. So this, this looks great. I've got my 8,000 grit stone on here now. Same motion on and off the stone as I'm going back and forth. Now we should start to see some some polish here. Okay, so that's that's looking really nice. We've got polish all the way back to here consistently and and in areas back into there. So that looks great. We're going to move on to the uh, bevel next. Okay, I've got the uh, Tormac here. Is it of course, it's a wet grinder, uh, spins fairly slowly. So I'm going to put water in the tray. And we want to be careful not to fill it above the lip there. The wheel soaks up quite a bit of water, so it will drop a little bit. 
That'll probably work. Now this, this wheel's a little dirty, so I'm going to clean it with a diamond plate. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now note that I'm, I'm using a, uh, a DMT dia flat lapping plate. The stone I was using earlier would wear too quickly doing this type of work on a stone. This, this, these dia flat plates are made for flattening other stones. The dia sharp, which is what I was using before, is for uh, sharpening tools. Okay, I'm ready now to uh, put the chisel onto the stone. I'm going to use this uh, square edge jig. Per the instructions here, I'm supposed to move the chisel to the right and that is where the, the reference is for the edge of the chisel. So I'm going to put that in there, slide that up against the side. We'll tighten that up. And I want to sight through here and see that this clamp is parallel to the, to the top surface. It looks pretty good. Okay, so that looks, that looks fine. I'll slide that on and uh, we'll, we'll figure out our angle here. Uh, before I do that, I just want to make sure my water level is good, uh, so that looks fine. I've got the chisel in the holder, and I need to get the, the bevel angle correct. Now I have two, two ways to adjust that. I can move the chisel in and out of the holder, right? that, uh, that would give me a low angle. As I come back, that's going to give me a steeper angle. Uh, the other option is to raise and lower this bar. I like to have it relatively low. I still have a fair amount of room under under here between this part and the wheel. So I'm going to lower this a little bit. And I want that to be I don't know, an eighth to a quarter of an inch. If, if this is too high, then the chisel has to be out quite a way. So, so that's probably a in the ballpark. So the other thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to actually come down here and sight along here and see how that see how that looks. So that looks that looks pretty good. I'm if anything I want to match or be a little steeper than that bevel. Remember that bevel I think is about 26 degrees right now. So I'm going to uh, turn this on. Make sure that's tight, and then just just briefly touch that on there. Now, when I pull pull this off to look at it, you know this this is spinning in water, right? And I've got water on here. I, what I want to avoid is water going inside of here, because if I'm grinding for any length of time, that water could actually rust the steel. So whenever I pull the holder off of the uh, bar here, I just shake the water off a little bit. That gets rid of that. And now I'm going to look here. And I can see it's hitting a little towards the front, which is what I want. It is hitting to one side, which might be an issue. I'm going to check to see how square this is. Man, it's not very square. It's it's out of square and it's high on this side, which is the side that I'm grinding on. So I'm just going to continue going and we'll see how that plays out. It's important that you hold this jig correctly. There is usually there's some play in here. This one's actually fairly tight. Um, but sometimes there's play. So in order to get the play out, I want to be pushing down here. So what I'll typically do is I'll, I'll grab the holder like this. Um, if you're a little shorter or depending on where the Tormek is sitting, you might want to grab it like that. But I'm basically squeezing these two parts together. And if I do that, there's no play in this. And then my finger is going to go there. And I'll just move this back and forth. So I want to make sure I don't go too far off the stone. 
if you do that, you're going to wear the edges of the stone more and you're, you're not going to get a straight bevel on your chisel. Okay, so that's, uh, that's coming along. I've hit most of that surface. Now, I can see though that it's, it's not very square. Definitely high on this side. So I'm going to turn this over so this side is high. So if, if this side is, is sticking out more, right, it's out of square like this, I need to take more off of here, which means I need to get this edge closer to the wheel, which means I need to turn it like that. So I'm going to turn the whole chisel that way. I'm going to hold the chisel like that so I'm, I'm pushing with my fingers against that reference. Now I can loosen that. The chisel is not going anywhere. And I'm now going to keep it against the reference here, but have a gap here, right? Turning it like that. Okay, we'll continue grinding. You can push pretty hard on this thing. If, if the Tormek is running correctly, you almost cannot push too hard. I mean, you, I'm pushing as hard as I can there, and I'm just barely slowing down the wheel. Okay, at least eyeballing that, that looks more square. We've almost done the whole surface. I want to hollow grind that whole surface. Let's take a look. Okay, that, that looks good. That's nice and square. I got lucky on that. Normally it takes a couple times to get that square. Notice when I wipe that, I'm, I'm wiping away from myself. Oh, that's pretty obvious. Okay, I've still got one little bit here that has not hit yet. I'm going to go a little bit longer. Okay, so that's looking good. I'm still missing just a touch there. Before I go finish, I'm going to double check my angle. So I'm, I'm between 27 and a half and 30, which is great. I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to finish this up and then we'll be ready to home. Okay, I've got the uh, chisel out of the Tormac. My hollow grind looks great, <clears throat> and I'm going to start honing. So what I need to do is find the hollow, the, the front and back of the hollow. So that be the bevel and the back of the bevel there like that. So you will, you'll be able to hear. I want to find when that's sitting flat. I'll put a little water on here. The way I hold it is I put my finger directly over the bevel and then I'm holding obviously the back of the chisel here with my fingers and my thumb there. It's whatever is comfortable for you. I've seen some people actually hold it like this. Uh, personally, I, I find that very awkward. Um, I've actually seen some people push like this. They have better luck with that. So whatever you do, you just need to control very accurately that angle. The other thing I do is I want to increase the pressure at my finger. So I usually use my left hand and I'll reach forward and I'll actually push down a little bit harder right there. So I'm just going to bring the chisel back and I'll take a look. And I'm a little heavier on on this, uh, what would be the right side. So I'm going to move my finger a little further to the left. Now, because this is a thousand grit stone and because I'm removing very little material, I, I should only have to take, you know, two or three passes here. Okay, so that's pretty good. I guess very narrow little flat there. I want to go a little bit more. Now sometimes when you're doing this, the chisel will chatter. That means there's too much pressure here and not enough pressure here. So that means you need to just kind of skew the pressure forward. You ideally don't want to lift that. You just want to put more pressure at the tip. 
Okay, so this looks great right now. I've got a very small flat there, you know, maybe a 64th or so, but that's going to work just fine. Okay, there you can see that flat. It's very small, but I, I just need, need it to show up and I need it even across there. All right, I'm going to switch to the 4000 grit stone. Same, same process. Find those two points of contact. Okay, that's looking nice. That's gotten a touch wider, but now it's um, shinier. Now I'm not, for some reason, I'm not hitting this, this edge quite as much. I'm going to go another pass or two here. Okay, that looks great. 8,000. Sometimes I'll put two fingers here and a wider chisel. One thing that, that you probably can't see in the picture here, as I'm bringing this back, I'm trying not to move my arms much. I'm moving my body more. That uh, helps me maintain the angle a little bit better. Okay, so that looks good. I, I've probably pushed a little metal off the edge now, so I want to come back to the face. And only on the 8,000 grit do I want to do that. So I'm going to go back and forth a couple of times, a little less pressure each time. Okay, I'm sure that's nice and sharp. So that's one way to sharpen a chisel. I was taught that way about 35 years ago. I've been doing it ever since, and it works really well for me, and I think most people find it works well for them. You need to practice though. You're not going to do this right the first time around. And what you'll find is the more you do it, the better you get. You'll get quicker, you'll get more accurate, you'll get sharper chisels. So practice like anything in woodworking and you'll have some really great tools to work with on all your projects.